In today's Airbnb world, you have to stand out from the competition. And Michael Crockett is here with us today on the Fearless Investor Podcast, talking about the top three ways that his properties stand out from the rest. Hey, everyone, welcome into the Fearless Investor Podcast. You're listening to me, Kyle Stanley, and this is a uh, a long overdue podcast for me. Michael Crockett has been a friend of mine for a long time. Uh, I think I might've met him when I was like right around three or four properties. So the fact that it's taken me this long to bring him on the podcast is like shame on me, slap on the wrist. Uh, but I'm really happy that he got to be on here and, and that we got to uh, share the knowledge that I know that he has, especially when it comes to making your properties better, making them unique adding streams of revenue to them. He's the king of all of these things. And so I'm just really excited for you to jump in and listen today with Michael Crockett and learning how you can make your properties completely unique from the rest. Let's get to it. Hey, welcome into the Fearless Investor Podcast. And uh, today is a very special guest because Michael Crockett and I go back and uh, it's been, man, like I feel like you were one of the first hosts I actually really connected with when I started my short-term rental dream. I think you were like one of the first uh, members of Airbnb masterminds, if I'm correct. I think you were like one of the one of the first like ten or fifteen, and now we're at 150 thousand strong. So like you're one of the the OGs, bro. Yeah, I feel like an OG, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or bad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've definitely been uh, loving the value in the group. So I've been a member for a long time. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, uh, Mike, excited to have you on here today. We're going to be talking about how to make your property stand out from the rest. Uh, you've got a really amazing story. Really looking forward for everyone to hear that. But uh, first question right out of the gate, what's your craziest, wildest, most strange Airbnb guest experience so far to date? Yeah, you know, I actually have a lot of stories, but I just thought <laughs> I was going to keep it PG for your group. Uh, okay. With the one that's probably most important. Um, so it's one of my first guests. You know, there were a couple, uh, two ladies traveling together. And, uh, you know, I did all my research. I'm like, I got this hosting thing down. Um, I'm going to just give them a great experience, right? This is back when I was still meeting my uh, meeting my guests. Anyways, they checked in and, you know, no less than 10 minutes later, they're like, oh, we miss, we're missing this. We're missing hand soap. We're missing the coffee. We're missing paper towels. And I'm like, oh my God, how could I forget all that basic stuff, right? So um, anyway, long story short, um, you know, I missed probably like five or six things that I should have had in the house. And I was, I went over there to check them out and say, you know what, I apologize, you know, for the experience. And uh, I just want, I knew, I knew it was going to be a bad conversation, right? Because I'd missed so many marks on their trip. But uh, they opened the door and there were big smiles. They were super happy. They loved the experience. They loved the house. And they actually wanted to buy a piece of artwork off my wall. Nice. And so that's kind of how my business was born. I was like, I, was, I had an aha moment. I'm like, not only did I underestimate, you know, expectations of these guests, but um, they gave me a brilliant, really good idea. So that's awesome. One of my best, one of my best stories. And, and I know that's part of your niche today. In fact, uh, it, Art House B&B, is that the name of your your company? Yeah, Art House, Art House ABB, that's the name of my company. Of Man, it's been five and a half years um, building this company. That's the OG part that I was talking about before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been a fun ride, yep. Nice. Give everyone just a real quick overview of your portfolio in short-term rentals. Um, you're based out of Sacramento. Um, yep. Yep. co-hosting, owning, arbitrage, uh, give, give us kind of the breakdown here. Yep. So I'm based in Sacramento, California, have been since I started. Uh, we are a portfolio of 31 listings now, active short-term rentals and midterm rentals in Sacramento. And um, gosh, I own two of them. The rest are a combination of arbitrage, which is basically, you know, renting long-term and then re-renting as a short-term rental. And then a big bulk are co-hosting, so managed deals. That's awesome. I think when you and I met, you probably were around like 10 or 12, right around there. I think it was less than that. You yeah. know, I was, I thought it was big. I was a big shot coming in here <laughs> with my, uh, <laughs> I think it was like maybe eight or nine. And uh, little did I know I had a lot still to learn. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's been a fun, fun ride growing the portfolio. Well, and I usually don't jump into your, your growth model right out right away i, I want to get to know your story but i do just since we're on the topic like what led to 
What, what's the, the biggest contributing factor for the last call it three years of going from less than 10 to now 31? Yeah, I think it's just being, uh, you know, me realizing my, my drive to succeed. Um, you know, you, you Kyle know more than anyone. Um, we're probably going to get into this later on the conversation about, you know, I spent many, many years in the corporate world in the corporate arena working jobs that I just, uh, I was good at, but didn't necessarily love or have passion for. So I think, you know, finding this, uh, this vehicle, this, this short-term rental and real estate vehicle really sort of in, ignited my drive to um, want to chase my passions and turn my hobbies into, um, into a lifestyle, you know, professional and, um, and personal that could, could uh, sustain me. That's awesome. Okay. So let, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, what was life like for Michael before getting into short-term rentals? Oh man, you know, I was working, I was actually working in uh, health insurance for the state of California and uh, I was a data guy. Um, I built, uh, you know, a small team of people that, you know, we, we basically ran data and analytics for health insurance. Um, I, I learned a lot about leadership in that role, um, but I also learned that it wasn't just something that I found exciting. You know, I was working 40, 50, 60 hours as a manager. I got to, you know, I climbed the ranks over eight years and uh, became like a senior manager, built a team. And then I was working just a lot. And I just didn't realize, you know, to what end am I working? You know, I'm not feeling any joy out of this. I'm good at it. Right. I am. I'm learning a lot about myself as, as a leader, but it's not really fulfilling a certain part of me. Um, so I was just stuck, you know, for a, for a while, just working that job because I knew, you know, you're supposed to get a job and make good money and keep working. Um, and there was always this thing, this entrepreneurial spirit that I was ignoring because, you know, I didn't want to be poor. I didn't want to be broke. <laughs> I knew that I couldn't make it right. Um, so yeah, before short-term rentals, it was just me just working hard and, um, trying to be successful. So you just told me something too, that I didn't realize about you doing data, data and, and analysis is like the other side of the brain from art. Like what <laughs> you're using exactly. both sides of your brain. <laughs> exactly, man. I was, I was really trying to infuse some creativity into my analytical work. And uh, I had these small wins along the way, you know, little, little pieces of me, I say that I could interject into the work, but by no means was it as messy or sloppy as I wanted to be as an artist and a creator. So I just kind of, you know, having that job and working all those hours, unfortunately, it, it, it taught me to suppress that 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 hunger that that want to do something creative um so it was a really tough place uh, for me to be in for quite a while and uh that's just why i, I was so accept so excited to have um opportunity to find um you know airbnb and short-term rentals it was just it was literally an aha moment honestly what did that aha moment look like well you know um you know outside of working um so many hours and you know trying to make it I also love to travel, right? Traveling was also like a form of escape for me. Mm. And um, every time I traveled, I'd use Airbnb because hello, it's just like tons of cool places that you can pick that are different from a hotel experience, right? Unique things that not everyone gets to experience. So I always used Airbnb as a traveler. Um, so I was gone, you know, many weeks uh, throughout the year, just on vacation. And I thought, you know, once, one, one trip, I think I was in Mexico, I was like, you know, I'm paying this mortgage on this house and I'm kind of like not there all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just an empty, an empty box and no one's staying there and they can, I, I wouldn't mind it. So I was like, why don't I just try being this, like a host, you know, I was like, let me just try to make some extra income and supplement my mortgage when I'm not there. Um, so that was kind of the first, you know, uh, aha moment. I was like, I'm going to try this thing. And I, I knew that I was going to do something a little bit different, right? Because my yeah. house, my house was full of my artwork. Uh, I'm a painter, you know, for those that don't know, I'm an artist, have been my whole life, tried to run away from it several times because I didn't want to be poor. And then I always came back to it. Uh, so my house literally is full of my own painting. So I just knew that, you know, maybe people would like that, you know, they want to stay in a place that looks like they want to stay in an artist's house. Um, so I tried it and lo and behold, you know, people loved it. That's cool, man. So did you, did you feel like uh, you, you said this this thing about feeling like you were suppressing your creative side. Did you feel like this was your opportunity to finally like 
separate the analytical side and the creative side and just put your heart and soul into something? I absolutely knew it was. Yeah. And I knew it because of the way I felt, right? There's nothing more honest than your, your emotions and your feelings. And as soon as I was all the excitement that I built up getting ready for that first guest, right? I did. I, I didn't have the luxury of having, you know, access to a core. I didn't even know you then, Kyle. I think I only know you from maybe your random YouTube video. I was watching everyone's YouTube videos. I'm like, if I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to do it the right way. Um, and I'm going to get as much free information as I can. As possible. <laughs> so, so I was a YouTube monster. You know, the analytics side of me, I just went in in research mode and I harvested as much information and data as I could. And I tried to set myself up the right way um, when I first started. And I was so excited. And I, I was just feeding that emotion, that feeling. Um, so I knew it was going to be something like at least fun that I could do that was going to be a creative outlet for me and make me some, some money. Awesome. So br break down that first one for us. Did you start it thinking like, I'm going to infuse art into this? Or did you think, no, I'm going to just get something up on Airbnb. And then that idea came a little bit later. And also just, you know, like what was some of the results of that first property too, that made you think like, okay, yeah, this, this is a thing this I'm going to do this. Yeah. So great questions, man. Um, you know what? I, like I said, at my house, I lived there. So everything that I worked on and painted, I just had it on the walls. I put it up for display. Right. Cause I, I knew that people who use Airbnb that me myself using Airbnb, I like to go into unique places. And so I knew that my place was unique, right? Cause I just, I'm a creative person. So it looks mm -hmm. like a creative person lives there. Um, and I just really went into this thinking that I would offer people a creative place to stay. Um, you know, not knowing about all the other things that I learned about, which is, you know, adding additional revenue streams and people wanted to buy the stuff in there. I had no idea. Um, so it was just really that it was just taking a part of Michael and putting it as much as possible into this house that people were going to be staying in so that they could experience something different. I, it's, it is literally a piece of me that I'm letting the world into and, you know, call me a romantic or whatever, but that part really excited me. Um, and it, it, it gave birth to this business, honestly. That's awesome, man. Um, so you, you start hosting guests at this place, walk me through like where it became something that was just helping to pay for the mortgage to then like, okay, this could be potentially a business. Yeah. So, so I launched my first, uh, my first Airbnb in 2017. Right. And um, like I said, I, I had actually had a, a trip planned. I said, I'm going to launch it at this date because I'm not going to be here uh, for a couple of days. I'm just going to test the waters, right? I'm just going to test to see how it is. So I threw my house up on uh, Airbnb. And I think the first moment where I realized I was going to make more than what I was trying to do, which is supplement my mortgage, was after like the seventh booking in like just two, two or three days. And I'm like, oh, crap, like. <laughs> this, this is going to be a thing, right? People are going to want to stay here. Cause I had, I had opened up my calendar for the future just, just to see, you know, what yeah. kind of traction I would get. Yeah. And people just were booking and booking and booking. And you know, that feeling, I can't describe the first feeling when you get that first booking. Oh, it's... That's been so many bookings ago, but it was like, <laughs> Oh my God, like it's go time. Right. It's like, and it was just me at that point. It's, so it's, it's like, an addicting feeling. It is, it supercharges you, man. It, yeah. it, it's, it's hard to describe it. But um, I knew then after the booking, it just kept coming that this was going to be something that um, was going to be larger than just a hobby. And especially because of the way I felt. Like I said, it all goes back to the, to the emotional thing. I was just so excited about it. So what was that next step for you then? You, you say, okay, this is something that I'm going to start making a lot of money with. You own that first one, but you just told us that you, you only own two of your 31 right now. So what was that next step? Yeah. So let me go back a little bit. So when those bookings were coming in, I was still living at the house, right? Yeah. So I would go stay at a friend's house and people were there <laughs> um, and I was doing everything. I was working still at the office. I would clock off on my lunch breaks, come home, do the turnover. Oh my gosh. And then go back to work. And I very quickly, after the, like the, the, the second month of doing that, I was exhausted. I was like, this, oh, yeah. is not, this is not sustainable. I'm having fun, but I'm, I got no sleep. I'm tired. So um, that's when I first started to like, really just try and figure out like, how can I get help? Like what systems or what things can I implement? 
to automate or get assistance with some of these processes, cleaning, right? Communications, you couldn't take me away from my phone. I was glued mm. to it. Um, so I just did, I went on a, a mad hunt and research to figure out what are the resources or systems that these, these big guys, you know, the Kyle Stanley's of the world, the Sean's of the world, what are they using with all these properties to be able to do, have a life still <laughs> and still do a short-term rental. So um, yeah, so I, you know, I did that for a while. I learned systems, I implemented processes, I got help, right? I got, I found an amazing cleaner. Um, and so she did the turnovers for me. Uh, I soon began to offboard communications with platforms like Hospitable or formerly, I think Hospitable now Smart BNB or vice versa. Um, and then after, after I started to remove myself from some of those day-to-day -day operational things, then I could have the headspace to understand, okay, what is my next step to grow this? Obviously yeah. I'm not stopping, right? I'm making great money. My mortgage is paid and I got lunch money for work, right? Yeah. Um, I just need more properties, right? So I think after that first initial battle research to get myself ready and launch, I went to another battle research to find out how people were acquiring so many properties. And that's kind of where I discovered um, the concept of arbitrage and, uh, and co-hosting. Awesome. So was the next step arbitrage and then it led into co-hosting? Give me a little bit of information about how that progressed. Yeah, the, the very first concept I started to go with was uh, arbitrage. Um, I was thinking, I was first thinking about buying a property, but I was like, I don't want to put that much money into it. Arbit what's this arbitrage thing? Oh my gosh, I have to put you know a fraction of the cost into starting another another unit. So um, yeah, arbitrage. I found the concept. Gosh, I think I watched a ton of free uh, videos on YouTube. I was I didn't have formal education, so I just had all my free content from YouTube. Um, and I just started looking for properties. I honestly, I went to Facebook marketplace. I went to uh, Craigslist, which I kind of don't recommend anymore because it's a, it's a yeah. wild, wild west land of properties. But I was so nervous. It was so funny. I was so nervous going to my first meeting at my first property because I knew I was going to be talking about, you know, my business taking on this property, not me renting it out. And I had, if I look back at the paper that I had, it was like a trifold word document that I made. And this, I handed it to this guy who's also, his name was Michael, believe it or not. And I'm like, yeah, here's my, here's my brochure. <laughs> He's looking at it. Paper making so much noise from shaking in your hand. <laughs> yeah. But, but what he, uh, the reason why I got that first one was because he just, he believed in me and he understood my, my confidence. I'd already had my house that I was operating. So he knew that I was already had experience, right? Um, but it was more so the, it was more so the confidence and, uh, what I was telling him about the business model. He, he said, yeah, let's, I would like to go with you and, and try this out. So that must've been a cool feeling. It was amazing. It was, uh, it was validation that I was doing something right, which, you know, uh, a lot of times the universe will tell you that you're doing something wrong. Um, so it was just, uh, yeah, it was just amazing, serious confidence boost. And I just took that into my next one. So you're doing this full time today, but I, had the privilege of kind of seeing a lot of your journey and it seemed like every time we talked, you'd had another property and another property and you're at like 13, you're at 14. And I'm like, dude, when are you leaving your full-time job? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you finally one day did, but that was, I know, I, I know how emotionally taxing that decision was for you. So take us back to that. And, you know, some of the the fears that you had of leaving your job and what you needed in order to really feel good with like, okay, I, I can, I can do this full time. Yeah. I think the more and more I did, uh, I was involved with short term rentals, the more excited I got um, about, you know, the idea of leaving my job, my nine to five. Um, it was so hard though, because my whole life, that's what I've done. I worked mm -hmm. nine to fives. That's what you're taught, what, what I was taught. As a kid, you get a good job, go to school, get education, and you work, save money. Um, but that just didn't always feel like that was supposed to be my path, especially with this last job that I had. It was so hard, and there was just no passion. Um, like I said, I was good at it, but I was just not excited about it. So I think for me, it was a, it was a personal decision and a professional one because I knew that uh, mentally I was not going to be able to sustain in my nine to five job because it was just so taxing if i juxtapose that with all the work that i had to do to scale and grow my str business there just wasn't enough time there wasn't enough michaels to split so i knew that as i continued to grow and scale there was going to be a point where 
for juggling both of those worlds just was not going to be sustainable from for me um so i made a plan i said you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna grow this business i'm gonna i'm gonna get x amount of properties in this time if i hit that number that's gonna be the the time where i'm gonna say you know goodbye to my nine to five job and even that taking that time to make that decision to like actually write out a goal and have a plan that supercharged my motivation right it like literally shifted the way i was thinking because now i wasn't just blindly having fun and building this business i was doing it um more intent intentionally and i was focused on a goal for me for myself which was um the idea of achieving it was just super rewarding and i wanted it so, so it sounded it sounded like almost before you had those goals it was you were growing it because it was fun. You wanted to have an extra income, but as soon as you wrote down that goal, it sounded like the mindset shift was you went from treating it almost like a hobby to treating it like a business. Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. It was, it was so fulfilling for me, like emotionally. And then I was making good money and I was like, hold on this. I could do this for like all for full time. <laughs> and I'm like, no. And then I met people like you and like, you know, other operators who are doing this full time. I'm like, this, this is like, this is possible. And um, the crazy thing is this, you know, I found it. I, no one told me that this is something that I could do. Um, I just took actions and did it and learned that it could, it could be possible to do it. Yeah. Awesome. So what did your business look like after you made that decision? You left your job, you're now putting full time into this. Did it, you, you keep using the word supercharge. Did it supercharge your business for you to be full time in it? Yeah, it did. Um, you know, once I reached that decision, I said, you know, this is gonna be my mark. I hit my goal. And I left my job. By the way, that was the best announcement ever that I made. The best yeah. in the world to say, actually, I'm not gonna do that report and I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. So, but yeah, it, it, once I got this, this space to breathe, right, it re really was this space to breathe and say, okay, now what do I want to plan for the next level for my business, right? Um, that's kind of what, that's kind of what allowed me to do, allowed me to structure things more, allowed me to spend more time building my team. Um, I knew just, you know, while I was still working both, my team was suffering because I didn't have a lot of time to give to them. I said, here's your task, go do it. It was less about empowering people. It was less mm -hmm. about really focused leadership and more about the execution of tasks to make sure that everything is sustaining with the business, right? Um, when, once I left my job, I had space to do that. I'm like, okay, now, you know, um, Sandra, who's my, my, my lead operator, what are your, like, what are your goals? What can I help you accomplish? Mm -hmm. How can we accomplish my, both of our goals together? Like, what does that path look like? Having this, the headspace to have those conversations was super valuable. And that, you know, release of that previous job in that work world gave me the opportunity to do that. So what I just, I was close with this. Well, it helped me realize too that in this business, you really can't, you can only grow as far as you can grow yourself. You need other people to be able to take you to that next level, systems and people to, to, to run them. Um, so that space helped me to just realize that and start to implement those, those, uh, th those changes. So what I'm hearing is when you didn't have a lot of time for your team, it felt it sounded like it was more delegation, but then that, that transition to put, putting full-time into this, that delegation turned into leadership. Uh, it, what, what's, what's the, if someone were to ask you, well, what's the difference in that? Like, what's the biggest thing for you? I think you already kind of just mentioned just time that you're putting into your team, helping grow, not just yourself, but understanding your team's goals and helping them reach their goals. But what other ways, since it sounds like leadership is a big part of your success, what other ways would you define leadership within your day-to-day -day and your team and how it's allowed you to be able to grow to 31 properties and continue to grow? Yeah, I think it's uh, th that, that uh, understanding that, you know, maybe the way that I do things is not the best way. Hmm. Um, so it, it gives you the space to actually be humble as well and to be open-minded to feedback that other people might have about your business, right? That was a big challenge for me too. It's like, you know, I built this business, you know, who are you to come in and tell me that I'm not doing it the right way, right? That's that delegation mind speaking. Just do it like I say it needs to be done. That's how we do it. Um, so having that shift, that space to say, well, you know, wait a minute, Michael maybe this person who does have experience with cleaning or 
who has been in the hospitality space or who has a business, has had a business before in their lifetime, has some different insight that could help your business grow, that could help you grow professionally as a manager and a leader for them. So that I think is, was a pivotal point because it allowed more dialogue between myself and my team to, to make sure that we all understood that we are marching towards uh, mutual goals, you know, not just my goals that I'm giving to them. Awesome. Cool. All right. I want to make a transition here. And uh, for those of you that are listening live here in our six figure formula, get your questions ready for Michael. Um, and those of you that are listening on the recording, whether it's YouTube or the podcast, uh, you know, throw your comments down and obviously check into the six figure formula so you can have access to people like Michael at fearlesskyle.com forward slash six FF. But uh, Michael, I, I've, you know, we've gone to Cabo or not Cabo. We're going to Cabo, I think <laughs> this year. Uh, we've gone to Breckenridge together. You've come to my house. We've, we've spent a lot of time with each other. And so I really, um, you were, I was blessed to have you as one of our coaches when we were doing, you know, a lot of the group coaching. And one of the big things that I know that you were really, really good at is not just saying, Hey, put art in your house and it'll do well. It's, it's all those extra streams of income. And it's also the things that make your house stand out from the rest. Like I can pull up a, a Michael Crockett property versus like anyone else in town and know the difference because it's, it's hitting you right in the face like it's obviously different you you do a lot of things you put a lot of time and attention you you make it your own which i really like um so when we talk about you know today's topic of the three ways to make your property stand out from the competition what are the let, let's start with just number one what, what's the top way that you think your property stand out and that's duplicatable for people that are listening right now yeah, so top thing to make your property stand out, um, especially in the Airbnb arena, is just really to offer unique, right, interesting services, goods, or experiences, right? As a traveler, when I first started using Airbnb, that's what I looked for as a, as a guest. I am my own avatar. I wanted somewhere that a hotel was not going to offer something different, unique, um, that just looked cool, right? Um, so that is a big way to set yourself apart. Just if there's something that you do well, that maybe someone else doesn't know about, maybe you're a crafter, maybe you're an artist like me, um, you know, maybe you're a carpenter or something like that, or you do woodwork, showcase that, right? Because not everyone has your talents and your skills. People want to see that, you know, you know, it doesn't have to be hidden away in your, in your own mind or in your own toolbox somewhere, show people that and give them the chance and opportunity to see it because they want to and they will stay with you to be able to support you right because a lot of people when they use platforms like airbnb they book with you yeah. and they want a piece of you um so yeah just just share yourself a bit of yourself not all of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but a what, bit of yourself. what's maybe you know I, I know the way that you talk about that is um through art and I know you're also doing a lot of other things. When you talk about unique services, like you've talked about Turo, you've talked about, you know, offering snacks in your place. And even that's an extra stream of income. And, and that's all awesome stuff. But from other people that you've seen, not within your organization, what are some ways that you've seen maybe from people outside your organization? That you're like, that's cool that they're, they're really sharing a unique experience that I haven't seen before that kind of embodies who they are too. Have you, does anything stand out? Yeah, I've uh, um, I've actually met a couple operators here locally in Sacramento, and um, there's one that always kind of sticks in my mind because she is a super big advocate for animals, right? She loves animals. She actually works in the field to take, uh, I think, a shelter. Um, so she infused that into her house, right? She loves pets, dogs, cats. Nice. The, the, the whole house feels like you could just take your pet cat or dog there with you. Nice. Um, so she's very accommodating for people who love animals and appreciate animals, but also want to take care, help take care of them. So her house, her entire house is themed um, to support animals. And I think people also, they love staying there because they feel like, you know, they're supporting a mission, right? They're, they're also feeling like they are, um, they're just able to take advantage of an experience that not everyone else can. Um, okay. So her house is not something that I probably I would design. Yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, it's I think it's just cool, and the people that have stayed with her, they love it. So I, I want to get to the other two reasons or other two things here in a second, but this word unique, right? It's really important. I think this needs to sink in for people because, especially right now, you know, you and I have talked about it. I've seen it. You know, we've literally 
10x the number of short-term rentals in our market. And when that happens, that's a thing called saturation, overcompetition, like whatever you want to call it. I, I think this idea of unique becomes so much more important today than it did even just a year ago, right? Um, so what what has it done for your properties to to be unique? And maybe do you have any in your portfolio that you, because you're co-hosting, you try to convince the owner, hey, I really want to go unique. They didn't do it. And now you can compare and see that it's not working as well. Can you speak to that at all? Yeah. So um, you, you hit it right on the bot, on the button. Um, you know, uniqueness is going to help drive people to success through this, whatever we're going through. Um, no longer the days where you're just throwing a, you know, a house with a bed and a blanket on it and, you know, going to be getting outraged bookings. You got to do something that not everyone is doing on the same path. Right. Um, so for us, you know, our, my properties, each of each one of them, I feel like I have touched in some way, right. Just to separate it apart from the competition. What that does is you establish quite a bit of loyalty with your avatar, with your guests. They recognize that you are offering something that is kind of true to a brand, right? Not just the Airbnb brand, but something, a niche that you've carved out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And they want to not necessarily honor that, but they want to support it, right? People who come to our places come back again and again and again, because they know that, first of all, not every art house is different, right? There's different art in each one of them. So that's, that in itself is exciting. Um, but also, of course, they have the opportunity to take something home with them, especially around the holidays. People love that. Um, it's just a different, you know, kind of atmosphere to be in. And um, people also know that I'm an artist, right? My face is on all of the uh, all the listings. Um, they know that we work with artists in the community. And so just by booking with us, they feel like they're supporting art. Who doesn't want to support artists and creative people, right? So it's not that they're booking with Airbnb, they're booking with you and your yeah. uniqueness, whatever your talent is, which is super important. Um, there's money to be made in the niche. So people need to get there and, and celebrate it with their, with their guests. They'll pay you for it. And I wasn't planning on doing this, but you know what? I got to show you guys, when you talk about an artist, this piece of art right here, <laughs> take a look at that. Every day, every day I wake up and I see I see this guy as soon as I walk into my office. Mike, Mike made that for me, a little fearless investor. Uh, what, do you, what do you call that? Abstract art? What would you abstract. call that? Abstract. Yeah, I just, you know, Kyle, when you invited me to your house, I don't go to anyone's house <laughs> empty-handed. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going really to I'm gonna take this guy something cool, right? So I'm glad that you like it. Uh, and, uh, it's up you're the there. man. You're the man. Well, um, Two more things. We've already talked about one, good services um, and something that's unique. What, what are some other things that are helping you stand out from the rest? Yeah, you know, we're really big on, um, you know, kind of uh, ca allowing customers or allowing our guests to customize their stay. Mm. Um, so what I mean by that is, you know, we offer things that maybe not all other hosts are offering. So early check-ins, right? If people, I, you know, every time I travel, I can never get the flights right with when I'm supposed to check in. I'm always sitting around somewhere. And so I realized that every time I'm traveling, man, these early check-ins, they're really valuable. Um, so we offer that. I offer that to my guests, uh, as well as late checkouts. You know, you're coming to a new, to a new place, you're partying a lot. Maybe you want to sleep an extra hour or two. Yeah, we offer that as well. Luggage drop-offs, you know, if you're coming early into town and you don't want to carry your luggage everywhere, you can drop it off at the listing, right? And we'll, we'll keep it on hand for you. Um, and same thing with pets. You know, everyone loves their fur babies. Um, and, but for some reason, not all hosts like to host them, but we do. Um, and we let guests know that, that, yes, if you have animals, then let us know what they are and <laughs> you can bring them. Um, so those types of things, just allowing people to have that customization flexibility. Yeah. Um, has helped to keep us apart. Um, that's that's so huge, especially the the pet part. I mean, you go to any market, and I feel like the majority that you look at the listings, you scroll down to their house rules, and no pets allowed. And so, if you're allowing pets, you're automatically putting yourself in like the top five to ten percent of listings in terms of availability for pets. And you know, um, does it have some negative connotations too? You know, especially if I've got allergies and I want to make sure that this one's no pets. Yeah, sure, but I feel like you attract more of a niche uh, when you actually allow for pets than, than when you don't. Um, so Mike, sec the second one then is customized stays. What's that third one? What's the, the third top way that you're helping your properties to stand out from the rest? 
For sure. Yeah, you know what? Another thing that people always typically need when they're traveling is a way to get around. Um, so I think you mentioned it before on the top of the hour, vehicles. We have a small fleet of vehicles. Every guest that stays with us, they get immediately, hey, you know, thanks for your booking. By the way, if you need a vehicle during your stay, we have these available. Bam. They have a selection of cars that they can choose from. So we are trying to be that one-stop shop. Oh, that's a horrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying, that sounds so salesy. Uh, we're just trying to be that, you know, that one provider who's giving them their accommodations and a way to get around their vehicle, right? So um, that was another aha moment back on in the early days when I had a car and I was like, you know, what's this Turo thing? So I went into research mode. And I was like, we're going to try this. It was part of the innovation bu budget. And I'm glad that we did it. That's awesome, man. Well, if you guys aren't already hearing just all the, the passion behind Mike's business and, and what he's doing, uh, then you need to listen to this again, because that's, that's exactly what I love about talking with you, Michael. So, um, and go stay with him over in Sacramento. If you're looking for a Sacramento stay, go check him out. Um, and Michael, uh, where, where do you want people to connect with you uh, after today? Yeah, I mean, I'm all over social media. They can hit us up on Instagram, uh, Art House ABB, Art House ABB. Reach out to me. I would love, I'm, I'm really big on my goals this year is to develop a way to teach people how to implement these revenue streams into their SCR businesses. So reach out to me, get connected, and then I can develop, uh, uh, we can talk about how we can implement some of these systems and additional revenue streams in your own business. Awesome. Okay, Mike. Well, we're going to stick in the six figure formula group right now and get your questions answered to my six figure formula students. And uh, for those of you that are on YouTube or the podcast, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And Mike, thanks for helping our audience to conquer the world of short term rentals. Of course, man. Thanks for having me. Always fun with you, Carl. All right, go connect with Michael and also make sure to check out the show notes on the podcast. If you're listening on the podcast or the YouTube channel, please drop us a review, subscribe, drop a comment. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, we want to get our message out to more people. And especially during these uh, uncertain times with inflation and recession, the more the people can bulletproof their businesses and especially being better neighbors, better community members by being a better short-term rental industry. That's what we're all about. So share this with someone that needs to hear it today. Thanks for joining us today on the Fearless Investor Podcast. We're helping you to conquer the world of short-term rentals.